man, just a closer walk with thee. Let it be, let it be. And we started with having his hand in our hand and being reminded that we truly are not alone on our walk. How fitting, how fitting for today. So why don't you join me in prayer? Father God, hide me, hide me behind your words. Let me be your vessel to your sons and daughters this morning. Truly, let them hear your words made move and transform their hearts. It is you who is speaking and not I. Amen. Amen. These two scripture passages we have before us this morning will take us from cradle to grave, from birth to death, from first steps to last breath. There are the Joseph of Jesus. They are our Joseph as well. They are here to honor our fathers this morning. And remembering the Josephs, remembering our fathers, we intentionally give glory to God, our Father. So blessed be our fathers, our stepfathers, our grandfathers, our great-grandfathers, and godfathers. Some are our shoulders, some are our AAA assistants, our muscles, our heights, when we cannot reach something that's quite high, our plumbers, our electricians, our painters, our buoys, our teachers, our coaches, protectors, lawyers, our armor bearers, among many things. We see the face and strength of Jesus in them. Some of us may also have mixed feelings about this day. We may have had one or two earthly fathers. We may not have known our fathers. And the relationship may have been strained or difficult or non-existent, while others have loving and dependable relationships with their fathers. Today, nonetheless, is a day to reconcile these feelings in God's presence and in the body of Christ. Today, we remember how Joseph made an imprint in Jesus' life on earth. Jesus was blessed with two Josephs. They came into his life at the beginning and at the end of his human life. They were his anchors. They were his bookends. First, we have the Joseph of Nazareth. He was present in Jesus' early formative years, but his immediate reaction was a bit puzzling. When he heard of Mary's pregnancy, he quietly wanted to break the engagement. The same Joseph who received a visit from the Holy Spirit to set him straight, to remind him that he was the chosen one to raise Jesus with Mary. He said yes to being a stepdad. Joseph had to be right with God first in order to model that same behavior to others. Jesus' presence in his life was a constant reminder of the Holy Spirit's visit. Joseph taught the young Jesus about his own trade of carpentry. Joseph, the teacher, in his caretaker role. Joseph was the training wheels 
on a bike for Jesus. Joseph also reminds us of Hebrews 12, verses 9 and 10. And it reads, We have all had human fathers who disciplined us, and we respected them for it. Our fathers disciplined us for a little while as they thought best, but God disciplines us for our good, that we may share in his holiness. A father's duty to discipline. That Joseph of Nazareth was a man of strong beliefs, law-abiding citizen, and respected in his community. He was a man of honor and integrity who was faced with a tremendous short-term dilemma. His fiance was pregnant. His initial reaction, as scripture tells us, was to separate from Mary. But the Holy Spirit quickly intervened. Joseph embraced his role of caretaker, protector, advocate, provider, teacher, armor bearer, without any reservations. He embraced his total responsibility, being fully equipped by the Holy Spirit. Paul, in his letter to the Ephesians, reminds us that fathers have certain responsibilities. In Ephesians 6, verse 4, he says, Fathers, do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. Training up a boy, that was Joseph of Nazareth's responsibility. And that boy would be our Lord and Savior. Training up a boy whose footsteps Joseph would follow. Training up a boy who would make sure that a room with Joseph's name was in heaven. Training up a boy who was training his own stepfather as well, and both giving honor to God, their father. Can you imagine, church, what Joseph must have been thinking, raising the Lord and Savior and instilling in him the same values that had been passed on by his own earthly father. We may also wonder about the discipline that Jesus must have received. After all, he was a little boy. And we parents, we know what little boys can do. They can be mischievous, running around, I've had the recent experience of praying at a church with two little boys running around while preaching the word. Can you imagine Joseph disciplining Jesus? The words to convey in his discipline. Being the disciplinarian, being the comforter, being the counselor. Because in Jewish family, fathers were known to be the teachers and the disciplinarians. They were also known to bring the boys to the temple and teach about prayers. Joseph did it all. Raising this little boy named Emmanuel, who would be the way to the father for Joseph himself and be his salvation. Can you imagine how Joseph might have felt at times looking into Jesus' eyes as a little boy and knowing what he had said yes to, that bookend, that anchor. He was his first caretaker. Today, God wants us to remember how fathers have made an imprint in our lives. So let's look at the other Joseph in Matthew 27, the other bookend, 
the other anchor. He played as critical of a role in Jesus' life on earth. Joseph of Arimathea, who was known to have been Mary's uncle, Jesus' great uncle, he was a merchant of metals who traveled throughout Europe for his business. He was a wealthy man, a righteous man, respected in his community. He was also a member of the high counselor of the elders in the temple. Scripture tells us that Joseph was a disciple and follower of Jesus' teaching in secret. John 19 verse 38 says, now Joseph was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly because he feared the Jews. Can you imagine how Joseph might have felt carrying the secret? Was the silent type among the elders when they were made, giving accusations or discussing Jesus in disparaging ways? Can you just imagine his own burden? His heart had been stirring. God had been speaking to him and was preparing him for his greater call. Because upon Jesus' death, he boldly came forward to do the right thing, the honorable thing, and honor his king. That Joseph stepped forward to Pontius Pilate to claim Jesus' body and give him a proper Jewish burial. Joseph declared publicly his love for Jesus that he had been holding in secret in his heart. With his friend, they carried Jesus to the tomb and both men came out of the hiding and they could no longer keep their Christian faith a secret. They stepped forward and proclaimed their Christian faith. They shed their old skin of being members of the council and humbled themselves before the body of Jesus for public transformation. In death, Jesus was welcoming new Christians. Joseph of Arimathea had his own baptism at the cross. He welcomed Jesus' body in his arms and carried him to the tomb, acknowledging Jesus as his Lord and Savior, and now being made anew in front of the community and cared for Jesus' body. Can you just picture the image of this righteous man, elder, powerful businessman, humbling himself before the cross? Joseph, the caretaker of Jesus' body, was changed forever. Joseph, with a heart of compassion and love. The fire of truth and light was too hot for him to hold on in secret. He had to proclaim who he was and whose child he was. And he welcomed the consequences of his actions because his history tells us that whomever declared followers of Christ publicly, would have been imprisoned, would have been stoned, could have been crucified. Can you imagine the chances that Joseph took, this wealthy man, to give away his wealth and humble himself before the dead body of Christ? The truth set him free on that afternoon, 
he was liberated. Aren't our earthly fathers called to stand boldly for what they believe? Stand boldly proclaiming fatherhood and defend their actions? Stand boldly before our God? God does realize that some of our fathers are resistant, timid to step forward. But God is here to reassure us that he is working on their hearts. He reminds us that where our hardened hearts of impossibilities stop, his love of possibilities begins. Today may be the day that somebody in our midst or watching us on cable TV would have the courage and feel guided by the Holy Spirit to pick up the phone and call his or her father after many years of silence. Today, that love of possibilities may be the day that someone will have the courage and strength to stand at their father's gravesite. We learn to forgive the shortcomings and the wrongs that our fathers might have done. We learn to forgive because we have faith. We learn that our impossibilities are met with God's love of possibilities. We honor God, our Father, whose daughter and son we are. So in closing, today remains a day to remember our fathers who have made an imprint in our lives. We are guided by our biblical elders, Joseph of Nazareth and Joseph of Arimathea, who are the models of caretakers with integrity at critical moments. We ask our fathers on this earth to be challenged by the truth and light, to come out of hiding, to get rid and shed the old skin and boldly claim parenthood, boldly claim whose child they belong to. You see, both Josephs resisted the temptation to turn away from responsibility. They are our examples of transformation. They made a conscious decision to step out in faith, not looking to get a star. Their decision was to glorify and honor God, the ultimate caretaker. They were right with God so they could be right by us. They proclaimed their faith publicly and took responsibility. The imprint was made. The anointing was claimed. The secret was destroyed. The agape love embraced. The tomorrow welcomed. The yesterdays buried. Today, my brothers and sisters, is a day for fathers to honor whose father they belong. And I ask you, has God made an imprint in your life yesterday, today, and to make an imprint for the tomorrows to come? Amen. <laughs>